Hello everybody, I'm Miss Belskis, class of 1989, that was last century, um, and I'm an upper school English teacher here, and I'm here to introduce Jean Jackson, class of 2019! Whoop whoop! Whoop whoop! Okay, okay. 2017. <laughs> 17. I'm already coming out of the gate swinging on her. Okay. When Jean asked if I'd introduce her, I of course told her it was my honor. And then I thought of all the things I could tell on her. <laughs> like I remember this time when Jean, just a tiny scamp back then, was at a seventh and eighth grade dance. Michelle, you remember. I'm just kidding, that's a total lie. I'm just fabricating that. That's a... But besides all that, a certain line from literature came to my mind with regard to Jean. I know, I know, what an original idea for an English teacher to do, Belskis, right? Would it surprise you to tell you that I had cats, too? <laughs> anyway, the first book sophomores read is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And there's this line where Daisy Buchanan says to her paramour, Gatsby, ah, you look so cool. You always look so cool. And that line made me think of Jean. <laughs> no, I don't mean cool as in mean kid popular cool. I don't believe in that, in that trash. No, I mean bona fide cool. Real cool. <laughs> when I think of Jean Jackson, I think all things cool. Genuinely cool. She's just that. Always has been. Jean has always been chipper, smart, sassy, kind, and energetic. She's unapologetically Jean Jackson. A can-do human. Someone who applied for and got into an immersive program in China during the summer while she was still in high school just to learn about a culture she was really interested in. Someone who took to the stage her senior year to belt out a phenomenal cover of Stevie Wonder's I Wish. I think there was a little bit of this, am I right? Am I right? She'll show you when she gets up here. Anyway, after graduating from St. Mary's, she took Howard University by storm, majoring in TV and film and minoring in Mandarin Chinese and graphic design. From there, she continued with her love of storytelling by being a part of the Howard Entertainment Program, a partnership between Howard and Amazon Studios. Jean then went on to intern at HBO Studios, where she provided feedback on shows like Euphoria. After that, she was selected as one of four filmmakers from historically black colleges and universities as part of the Beats by Dre Black Futures Program. Beats fully funded her short film, The Nest, guiding her from workshopping her story to post-production and then to the screen. And it's fantastic. I know. I've seen it. And now Jean spends her time as an executive assistant at HBO. Anyway, I've rambled enough. I'm so happy you're here, Jean. You're one cool cat. And I'm so happy for you out there to hear her. So get on up here, Jean. Stop making us wait. And don't forget to show us some of those dance moves. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It feels so surreal to be back in this space. It's like a beautiful paradox. It feels like just yesterday I was sitting in the pews, as all of you are, but at the same time, it feels like a lifetime has passed. So thank you for having me this morning. One question that I've asked myself since leaving St. Mary's is, what does it mean to step out of your comfort zone? For some, it might mean challenging yourself to read more books this year than you ever have in a given year. For others, it might mean going to a restaurant by yourself, despite the anxiety that might accompany this feeling of being alone. Or it could be the process of choosing the right college for you, a sense of agency that you haven't really had before. For me, there have been several moments wherein I've stepped out of my comfort zone. 
As a black woman existing in this space and then going to a historically black college and university, Howard University, that was one of the biggest leaps of faith I've ever taken. But it was one of the most rewarding experiences of my entire life. And I'm so glad that my parents and my grandfather pushed me to take that step. College, as many of you will soon find out, is an amazing time to explore who you've been, who you are, and who you'd like to be. You meet so many different types of people from varying socioeconomic backgrounds and from all over the world. And with that, you're so exposed to so many different types of beliefs inside and outside of the classroom. It was in college where I felt like I truly grew into myself because college is not only a, pla a place to excel in your future craft academically, but it is also a place to build character and gain real world experience. When originally deciding my major, I actually kind of went about it backwards. I knew that I didn't want a career based in math or science, which quite honestly took a lot of career choices off of the market for me. But instead, I realized that I seemed to thrive in arenas where stories were being told, which is why when I got into Howard, I went in with the intention of being a journalism major. At the time, this felt like the safest route when it came to pursuing an artistic career. However, right as I stepped on campus, before even taking a single journalism class, I decided to switch my major to TV and film, as that is where I felt my passion was truly growing. And this felt like a huge risk. I really didn't know many people that had chosen this career path, and I grappled with this constant fear of one day becoming a starving artist. However, once again, I realized that this path was absolutely the best choice for me, and I'm very glad that I chose it. So skip forward a couple, couple years to last February, I decided to go out on a limb and apply for the Beats by Dre Black Futures program, a program created in 2020 with the intention of uplifting young black artists and giving them the platform to share their stories. And for some reason, the idea of creating my own short film eluded me and has eluded me for years. How does anybody make a movie? It's one thing to watch TV or watch a movie, but it's an entirely different beast to create your own, to gather a cast and to gather a crew. It scared me, but the possibilities also really excited me. So I decided to apply. Interestingly enough, I actually applied for this same program in 2020 and didn't even make the first round of interviews. However, instead of letting this deter me, it fueled my desire to show them that I was exactly who they were looking for. And sure enough, after two rounds of interviews, I was one of four HBCU filmmakers selected to tell my own story, a story that would be fully funded by Beats by Dre. And this is where I came up with the concept of The Nest, a short film about a young girl trapped in a room. One day, she has to decide if she would rather stay in the comforting yet stagnant space she's always lived in, or if she would dare to disturb the universe and venture out into the unknown. Once I came up with this concept, I pitched my short film idea to the Beats by Dre executives and they greenlit my film. I then began the process of pre-production. Pre-production is essentially where you start laying the groundwork to make the final vision possible. This is where I conceptualize how I envision the set design, who I wanted to be in my cast, what I wanted my costumes to look like, and who I wanted my cinematographer to be. I was located in DC at the time, and my producer and I scouted local DC parks in various interior locations around the city. Seeing as I wanted my directorial debut to be something I was immensely proud of, I knew I wanted to see people that looked like me reflected not only in front of the camera, but behind the scenes as well. Most of my crew was black, and I made sure to express that one of my non-negotiables was to have a black woman cinematographer seeing as there are very few in the film industry at this current moment. My cast was comprised of all black women and girls, some of whom attended Howard with me and were models and dancers, and some of whom were dancers at a local DC high school. Having the power to make these choices not only created a sense of community on set, but also shed light on how easy it should be for Hollywood to cast black actresses and employ black crew members. Needless to say, it was a very hectic time as I was juggling my internship with HBO, graduating from Howard, and gathering the logistics for my first short film all at the same time. In the end, we, we shot the entire short film in one day. We started at 7 a.m. and we wrapped at 9 p.m. It was one of the longest and most challenging days of my entire life. And one thing that I've learned about the film industry is that anything that can go wrong will absolutely go wrong on set. 
And as the director of this film, everyone was looking to me to make the final decisions and to rectify any, any issues that popped up along the way. And keep in mind that the majority of my crew were all 30-year-old men, apart from my cinematographer and Carmen, who was in my class at St. Mary's. So it was very daunting, to say the least. But I pushed and challenged myself to be the best me I could be in that moment. Because so many people had invested so much time and energy into my vision that I felt I owed it not only to myself, but to them as well, to show up and show out. And so that's exactly what I did. After we finished filming, it was time to jump into post-production. And this is where we began the process of editing, sound mixing, composing, and color grading the film. To see my idea come, to, come together in a way that I had imagined it originally was almost unexplainable. The euphoria I felt from receiving drafts, giving notes on what to change, and what was perfect was unlike anything that I'd ever experienced before. I learned so much through this process, and by the time it aired on the Beats by Dre Instagram and YouTube, I'd cried, I'd laughed, I'd had literally every possible human emotion. And I'd assumed that the hardest part was behind me, but I realized the day of my film's release that sharing your art with the world is paralyzing. You pour into these projects with everything that you have, allow yourself the immense vulnerability it takes to tell your story authentically, and then you have to make room for strangers to gaze upon it, leaving them to decide if it's worthy or not. This was an idea I hadn't yet grappled with, and I realized in that moment that I was never going to be in a place where I felt entirely comfortable ever again. There's always going to be an event, a request, a moment in time wherein I feel a bit lost and confused. That's how I felt when I shared my short film with the world. That's honestly how I feel right now, months after the release of my short film as I adjust to my new job working for HBO. The feeling never truly goes away. But how I choose to respond to this discomfort is a choice only I can make. And that is where my power lies. As each of you embark on your journey down your respective career paths, always remember that you have the ability to control your own narrative. Don't be afraid to speak up in spaces and advocate for yourself. I know personally it can feel really uncomfortable to make these choices, but you have the power to shape the type of person you want to be. Don't be afraid to be afraid when you step out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, don't let that fear deter you from taking that first step. Take that leap of faith, dare to disturb the universe, and challenge the perspectives of those around you. For you never know what beauty might wait for you on the other side. And now, without further ado, I present my short film, my directorial debut, The Nest. Thank you. There once was a girl who was trapped in a room. Except she didn't know she was trapped, for it was all she ever knew. First, she'd change her clothes and brush her teeth, then sit at the table for buttered toast and berries. She'd dance her heart out at a party for one until she heard something that didn't quite belong. After she ate her lunch, she'd get something sweet and she'd always say, Mmm, what a delectable treat. Then she'd tell her friends of the new stories in her head until they tire and tuck them into bed. Then, she let out a big yawn. She changed into her PJs and slept until dawn. Mmm, what a delectable treat. 
Yet one day when she woke, she didn't feel quite the same. It seemed the magic was wearing off of her never ending game. I think I can. She thought about it, those words, more and more. She knew she wanted to see what was behind that big white door. So she packed her bag, all her precious belongings, and walked to the door that was constantly calling. a girl who escaped her room and stood in wonder for she never knew the sky was so blue. So Birdie did what felt right and she extended her wings and she flew and flew and flew into whatever this world might bring. Could you tell mine if you tried? 